This video shows how to connect the AlphaPix controller to your local network and PC. Because this particular controller and the AlphaPix 4 are network devices, you will need to hook it up to your network. It is not possible to use this connection, which is a Cat5 connection, with your LOR controllers. LOR controllers, despite having plugs that are Cat5, are not interchangeable with any E131 controller on the market. So, be aware that this plug is designed to connect only to your Ethernet network, not to an LOR controller. Okay, let's go ahead and get started with some of the basics. First is, this is the network port on the AlphaPix controller. Now on the AlphaPix 4, it is located on the bottom and it looks identical. On the end of the port, there are two lights. There's a green light and there is a yellow light. These provide status and if you look on the board itself, it will indicate what these lights do. The green indicates that you have a network link. This is this one. And the yellow or orange indicates that there is data going across that connection. So this will be very helpful in determining if you are physically hooked up to the network and receiving signals. Now, we also need to hook this to our network. There's a variety of different ways we can hook them to the network. In the scenario I'm about to show you, my particular computer has two network connections. One to a wired network and one with an extra network card directly to the AlphaPix controller. This may or may not be your particular configuration. It is possible to use one wired network and simply just run the connection from your PC out to the network and then hook up to a common network desktop switch or other type of switch. You can see here this switch has a variety of different ports and you may have something called a router or a Linksys box or a Belkin box and it does something similar. You'll have multiple different uh, connections and it allows you to connect all those devices. Now in my particular computer it will allow me to directly connect one device, such as this AlphaPix controller, directly to the controller. But in some PCs, it is not possible to directly connect the Cat5 cable from the controller over to your PC because it does not recognize a direct connection of devices. It needs to go through a switch. So if you're unable to get links into your connection, Go ahead and add a switch. So what you would do is you'd come from your computer, you would go to here on one of these ports, and then come out another port over to the AlphaPix. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. Now, of course, uh, we do have power hooked up in this particular case already. So let's go ahead and power on our controller. Now, if we do not have something hooked up to this controller port, to the Ethernet port, this controller will not boot and operate. You must plug it into a network for it to operate. Even in the test mode, you will still need to have a network connection. You can see that now this particular controller is indicated because the green light, LED number three right here, is not lit up. It's saying plug into network, no network connection. So what we need to do is go ahead and plug in the network. So I'm going to go ahead and plug in the cable and we'll see that this particular thing says now entering normal mode IP address static and then it has my IP addresses or IP address now there are two kinds of addresses that you can obtain there are static IP addresses which is the default on this controller and it is defaulted to 192.168.0.50 you can change the IP address from this controller and you can also use DHCP, which is, again, not the default. DHCP is Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol, and that simply gets an IP address from some other device on your network, such as a Linksys or router box on your network. If that is the case, be aware that the IP address could change from time to time. So if you have your output software on your computer set up, it may not necessarily get the same IP address. We do recommend static IP addresses and that is why it comes shipped to you standard with a static IP address. So in this scenario we have used and configured our computer for the standard IP address subnet of 192.168.0. Dot. In this particular case we're going to do one for our host machine and this is the IP address of our controller. 
Again, each of these scenarios for your particular use may vary. So what we're going to do is we're first going to make sure that we can reach the controller. But first, let's review the settings of this particular PC. So I'm going to go to Control Panel. And this may vary depending upon your computer. If you have a Mac or if you have a Linux-based computer or any other device that is sending data over to this controller, uh, you may need to adjust appropriately. This controller will work with all types of devices on the market. So if you have a Mac, if you have a Linux PC, it will receive ArtNet and E131 data and can be configured via web browser. See our other videos. Shown here is Windows 7, so we're going to go ahead and go into Network and Internet, the Network Sharing Center. And in this particular case, we see we have two networks here. And I'm going to go over here to Change Adapter Settings. And what we see here is we have my domain.net. That is my local area connection to my regular business network. This may be your home computer. Again, this computer does have two networks. It might be more common that you have a wireless connection to your network and then you also have an Ethernet jack on your computer or laptop. Here we have our sec second network. So let's look at our first network here. We're going to click properties and we're going to look at DHCP IP address uh, protocol or IP protocol 4 and we can see that we have an IP address automatically, which means DHCP. So that means my regular computer, not designed and not hooked up to this controller, designed to connect to my home network and get an IP address. Then over here, we have a set, second network connection and a sec, second jack on my computer. And I'm going to click Properties. And you can see here, we're going to go to IP4. And in this particular case, I have hand coded in the address of 192.168.0.1. Now, this subnet mask means that we don't use any addresses outside of this last, what is called octet, the last digits. And these numbers can be anywhere from 0 to 255. So we've gone ahead and I've set mine as the primary address. Uh, you may need to set that appropriate depending upon your network. And of course, on the settings of your Alphabix controller. So this is set to 1 and this controller here is set to 50. So we're all good to go. Looks everything looks fine. So let's do a quick test. So I'm going to go here, I'm going to open up a command prompt by typing CMD or you can also find it here as a command prompt. This is going to bring up my command prompt. You may have something similar in your operating system in Mac or Linux. And we're simply going to issue a ping command and this is pretty common across all operating systems. And we're going to ping 192 168.0.50. That is the controller. So what we're doing is we're going to send little bits of data or uh, ICMP packets from my PC over to the controller and it's just asking are you there. So we'll go ahead and hit enter and you can see that it is responding correctly. So let's show you what it looks like whenever it's not connected. So we're going to disconnect the connection. You can see that the light is not connected for a network. So we're going to go ahead and issue the ping command again and you're going to see that it errors out. This indicates that we cannot reach from my PC to the controller. So if you're attempting to send any kind of data such as E131 or ArtNet data or if you're trying to reach the web browser, browser interface on the controller to do configuration or test using Xlights or other applications and you're unable to ping this particular controller from the device that you're sending the data from, it will not work. So whenever you're not sure if there's a network connection issue, go ahead, issue a ping command, make sure that you can reach the device if you're troubleshooting inside your PC. So let's go ahead and hook up the network again and reissue the ping command again and you can see that it's again now operational. So in this particular case, we are set and ready to go and now can go ahead and bring up the web browser interface. So let's go ahead and bring up a web browser interface. So we're simply going to go to 192.168.0.50 press enter and you can see we've reached the controller. So at this particular point we have configured and are now ready to test using Xlights or other similar applications our output from our PC over to our controller and see our other videos for that configuration and testing information.